Have you ever forgotten something very important, such as an appointment, a password, or the name of that friend from college? I'm sure you've worried about the possibility of losing your memory, haven't you? And for good reason. There's an exponential increase in neurological diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS. Over 55 million people are living with dementia today, and the forecast is to reach at least 150 million in less than 30 years. To give you an idea, there is one new person diagnosed with dementia every three seconds. What measures can we take to protect our brain health? What if I told you that something as simple as the position you sleep in could make a difference? Today's video topic, Sleeping Position Can Change Your Life and Protect Your Memory Against Dementia and Neurological Problems. And I'll spoil it for you. It's very easy to do. But before that, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and activate the bell so you don't miss the notifications of our upcoming content. And of course, share it with your friends, family and acquaintances. Many people face memory loss and diseases, and I'm sure you want to protect a loved one. So spread the word and tell me, have you been losing your memory? Do you sleep well? Which part of the world are you from? Write down below, revealed. Sleeping on the right side will change your life and may clean your brain. Let's go. Why is there a huge increase in neurological diseases recently? Some things are clear, population aging, lifestyle changes, people have become more sedentary, are eating worse, there's chronic stress on everyone. Your boss is sending messages on WhatsApp. People can find you at any hour. Life's pace has accelerated. We're sleeping less and worse. And there's been a significant increase in diseases like diabetes and hypertension that damage the brain. But that's not all. Environmental toxins like pesticides. People throw a bunch of neurotoxic agents to kill bugs. And it ends up in the water. We breathe it in or we eat it and it can increase Parkinson's. Just opening a parenthesis here, the increase in Parkinson's is alarming, a silent pandemic. I made a Parkinson's video. I want you to watch it. I'll leave the link at the end. And also heavy metals. Eat fish every day and you'll be contaminated with mercury. Also air pollution. It's tough, right? It's amazing how resilient our body is. How can COVID affect the brain? And then there was COVID, right, that everyone caught. What does COVID infection cause in the brain? What we know about the short and long-term effects on brain function includes memory loss, worsening attention, language and communication problems, reduced mental processing speed, difficulty making decisions, learning new things. And research shows that COVID prematurely ages the brain due to inflammation of the nervous system accelerating the process of dementia, triggering genes that were dormant. So if you forgot your phone or bank password, calm down. What is dementia? Dementia is a syndrome characterized by the loss of brain functions, such as memory, language, attention and reasoning. This loss significantly interferes with the ability to perform daily activities. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementias accounting for about 70% of cases. And yes, dementia is a global public health problem that requires immediate attention and action. It doesn't just affect the person, it affects the whole family and can be devastating and sad. I have a patient who was extremely intelligent, a professor at UNB, discussed all subjects and current affairs with me, and today is just a shadow of that person. If I, who have been her doctor for 10 years, already feel so much when I see her today. Imagine the relatives who have to live with this day after day. It's a great stress, a suffering for the caregivers. The problem is that the medications we have today are palliative. They can't really stop the disease. The brain continues to worsen over time. In the United States, two new drugs came out that created some hope, but they are very expensive. The price is like a house per year and with a certain risk of brain edema, but they can hold the disease. We have to wait for the medications to become cheaper because today they are still inaccessible. You might say, yeah, I have memory loss. And with this talk, I'm getting even more nervous. Calm down. 
There are differences between normal memory loss and dementia. What are they? Memory loss versus dementia, unveiling the differences. Forgetting where you left your keys is normal. We all experience memory lapses from time to time. But when these forgetfulness become frequent and interfere with your daily life, they may be a sign of something more serious. Normal memory loss involves occasional forgetfulness of names, dates or recent events. Difficulty remembering where you placed objects. Memory that improves with clues or reminders. Why does this happen? The main reason is distraction. When we are distracted, our brain isn't focused on storing new information. This can lead to frequent forgetfulness. But chronic stress can harm the hippocampus. If we don't pay enough attention to what we're learning, or if we don't associate it with other stored information, the memory will be weaker and prone to being forgotten. And if you forgot the name of your college friend, whom you haven't seen in 40 years, over time, memories become less accessible if they are not used or reinforced. It's as if that road leading to the memory fades, becomes weak. On the other hand, dementia is persistent and progressive memory loss. What is memory loss like in dementia? The person has difficulty learning new things. But, I'll open a parenthesis here, it's not impossible for them to learn new things. It's also associated with changes in personality, behavior, and mood and difficulty performing tasks that were once simple. I'll give examples. Who hasn't forgotten where they parked their car? That's normal memory loss. Now forgetting how to drive is dementia. Forgetting the name of a friend you haven't seen in a long time, normal memory loss. Having difficulty recognizing familiar people, dementia. It's important to remember that dementia is not a normal part of aging. If you're concerned about your memory, or someone you know's memory, consult a doctor for a complete evaluation. This video is important for you to recognize, but it's good to see a specialist. Early diagnosis of dementia is important for treatment and disease management. And there are many types of dementia, each with its own symptoms. And look, most people who have age-related memory loss do not have dementia. And there are many things you can do to keep your brain healthy and reduce the risk of dementia. What can we do to reduce the risk of dementia? What are they? I'll ask you eight questions. Grab a paper and pen there. Answer yes or no. First question, one. Do you eat healthily with lots of fruits, vegetables and whole grains? Yes or no? If not, you're new to the channel and make sure to subscribe. Two. Do you exercise regularly? at least 30 minutes a day. Yes or no? Sedentary lifestyle increases the risk of dementia 3. Do you have quality sleep, sleeping at least 7 hours per night? Yes or no? Both sleeping too little or too much have a higher chance of dementia 4. Do you keep your mind active, reading, doing crossword puzzles or learning something new, even if it's on YouTube? Yes or no? 5. Do you manage stress with techniques like meditation or yoga, or even keeping a journal? Yes or no, six. Do you have an active social life with friends and family? Yes or no. Social isolation increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, and dementia, seven. Do you have regular medical checkups and control diseases like diabetes, hypertension, arrhythmia, and cholesterol? Yes or no? Well, it's very important. All of them damage your brain. 8. Do you avoid smoking and excessive alcohol consumption? Yes or no? Add up your yes answers. The more yes you answered, the better. The maximum score is 8. If you scored 8, congratulations, maximum score. But if you scored 5 or less, you need to change your lifestyle. And quickly, even if you're young, it's by planting the right seeds that you'll harvest a healthy brain down the line. How can the position you sleep in interfere with your brain's health? How can the position you sleep in interfere with your brain? First, I have to explain the relationship between sleep and your brain function. Why is sleep important for the brain? Do you know? All animals sleep. Experiments have shown that depriving animals of sleep can be fatal in a few days to weeks. Sleep is something that the brain does for itself and for the good of the brain itself. Until 2012, see how recent this is, 
We thought that the brain cleaned itself. We thought that brain cells recycled all their waste. In the rest of the body, we have the lymphatic system to help remove excess fluid, thus preventing swelling, defending against infections, filtering impurities, cleaning dead cells, bacteria and viruses. It's our garbage collector. But the brain seemed not to have this lymphatic system. Big mistake. When we sleep, we activate this system of cleaning impurities in the brain. It wasn't enough to open the cadaver. It wasn't enough to look under the microscope. Nobody ever found it. And that was exactly why it took so long to be located. Because it only works when we are sleeping. This masked the existence of the glymphatic system. In the rest of the body, it's the lymphatic system. In the brain, it's glymphatic. With the advancement of brain imaging technology with functional magnetic resonance, researchers could see how the brain functioned while sleeping. And that's when the glymphatic system was discovered. Imagine tunnels filled with fluid around the brain's blood vessels. With each heartbeat, the blood pressure drives fluid through these tunnels, cleaning the brain's waste. So sleep is much more than just rest. It activates this glymphatic system, which will clean our brain. That's why it's important to sleep well. Another reason, right? You don't want to end up with dementia, right? Nor with other neurological diseases. When we are awake, these tunnels are deactivated. More than 95% of the glymphatic flow is carried out when we sleep. And without cleaning, it can interfere with the communication between neurons and the accumulation of beta amyloid and TAU proteins, which are hallmarks of Alzheimer's. And as I said, 70% of dementias are Alzheimer's. And see, everything matches. People who sleep less than seven hours per night have a higher risk of developing diseases like Alzheimer's. This may be because the glymphatic system doesn't have enough time to clean the brain waste, accumulating beta amyloid and tau proteins. And going further with aging, we sleep less and our arteries harden, reducing the pulsation that drives the glymphatic system. This may explain the link between hypertension and dementia. How to keep the glymphatic system working well? How to keep the glymphatic system working well? Asterisk. Sleep well. Try to sleep at least seven hours per night. Asterisk. Keep blood pressure under control. Asterisk exercise. Physical exercise can improve blood flow and the function of the glymphatic system. Studies in mice have shown that physical exercise increases glymphatic clearance, reducing the accumulation of proteins harmful to neurons. Asterisk. And sleep the right way. What's the right way? Is it face down? Is it on your back in the supine position? Is it on the side? And which side? What's the best position to sleep in for more glymphatic flow in the brain? The best position is sleeping on the side, and even better is on the right side. I'll explain. The sleeping position influences glymphatic flow. Mice sleep on their side, which facilitates the drainage of blood from the brain. Research in humans found that sleeping on the right side seems to be more efficient for this drainage because the right jugular vein, responsible for draining blood from the head, is more open in this position. And as I said, everything is interconnected. People with neurodegenerative diseases, like Alzheimer's, tend to sleep more on their backs, which may hinder glymphatic drainage. And people without problems also tend to spend most of their sleeping time on their side, especially on the right side, compared with on their backs or face down. Researchers discovered that about 72% of these people with dementia spent at least two hours per night on their backs, compared with 37% of those with healthier brains, raising the possibility that sleeping on the side might influence the elimination of toxic proteins for neurons. If you sleep more on your stomach or back, it would be interesting to train to sleep on your side. But how do we train to sleep on the side? One thing you could do would be the tennis ball technique, where you can wear a shirt with a pocket inside out with a tennis ball in the pocket to prevent you from rolling onto your back. Of course, this research is still in its infancy and a definitive causal relationship between the way of sleeping and dementia or avoiding dementia has not been established. Or if sleeping on the side can prevent dementia. There is still much to be researched about the glymphatic system 
and the relationship between sleep and neurodegenerative diseases. Like I said, it was in 2012 that they discovered the glymphatic system. But since we have few real things we can do against dementia and neurodegenerative diseases in general also, for example, the glymphatic system can clean alpha-synuclein that is related to Parkinson's disease. Anything is valid, especially if it's harmless, won't do you harm. And without any cost and that you can do right now, remember, sleep is an investment in your brain health. Prioritize your sleep and keep your brain functioning at full capacity. And you, do you usually sleep on your side? Did you like the video? Remember to like and share so that more people have this knowledge. Remember to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Thank you very much.